So this one's a pretty straightforward one if you can recognize that key principle that it's going for. On this general and practical principles in physics, you've got to be really thinking, what are the core laws and principles of physics that I need to be aware of and I need to be able to apply really, really quickly and fluently. So hopefully you'll see this and you'll think straight away conservation of energy. That's not where it starts with this question, but that idea of conservation of energy can come back a little bit later on. Essentially, press the popper in and we store some elastic potential energy in it. That is then transferred into kinetic energy when it leaps up off the surface. So it remains in this shape for two to three seconds. It then returns to its original shape. Now, hopefully that's ringing bells. Something which returns to its original shape is an elastic behavior. So this actually, this first part is certainly about material properties. A student concludes the material of the popper should be classed as plastic rather than elastic because it remains inverted. Whether you think this is correct, explain. Well, it's not correct, is it? Because it does in fact return to its original shape when the deforming force is removed. Now that is clearly what has happened. You've pressed it in, deforming force is gone. It takes a little bit of time, but the popper does return to its original shape, so the behavior is elastic. So the first um, mark is really just define what elastic is and then apply that to here. Well, third mark, why wouldn't it be plastic? Plastic behavior is a permanent deformation. Next one, describe how maximum height can be used to determine the launch speed. Now actually there's two ways to do this. Okay, um, I hope you kind of remembered this. Maximum height determining the speed. Originally I said it's a conservation of energy question, or it certainly looks like that. So you can use this equation, okay, and actually rearrange for V, where V is the initial velocity in this case. Um, we normally talk about balls with gravitational potential turning into kinetic, but this is the opposite way around. Initially, it has some kinetic energy, and then that's all turned into GPE. So this is max kinetic energy, this is max gravitational potential. So um, we're just working out that by measuring the height uh, lastly, otherwise, sorry, you can use v squared equals u squared plus 2as. And what you're looking for is you're looking for, can you rearrange that into an equation for the launch speed? Okay, well, we know in this case, we want the launch speed. We know that final speed is zero and h is the displacement s and we know a is g okay so we can actually just put all those numbers in zero equals u squared plus 2gh rearrange minus u squared equals 2gh we can actually because g is negative we can kind of ignore that um, so we just get u is root 2gh. Um, then over here, you'll see exactly the same thing. M's cancel first of all. So gh equals half v squared. Multiply by 2. Root 2gh equals v. Or in this case, it's the initial velocity, but we'll accept either of those for the full marks. It does need to be clear that you've stated that the final speed is zero in this case, or that we've got a conversion of kinetic energy into gravitational potential. So we've used our conservation of energy equation there. Comment on using the maximum height measurement as a means for determining an accurate value for the launch speed. Well, accurate means close to the true value. It's not going to be quite at the true value because both of these equations uh, constant acceleration um, or ignoring air resistance. Okay, so that's the issue really. There is air resistance or the uh, theoretical method ignores air resistance. Okay, well, what will this do? This will decelerate um, the popper, meaning that the theoretical speed will be lower than the actual speed. 
Okay, I hope that makes sense. You could also, because we've gone through the um, conservation of energy, you could say uh, energy is dissipated because of air resistance. For this second one here, that's perfectly acceptable. So I hope you can see there's a nice simple calculation in there and it's really important that you're able to express yourself with enough detail that you're not just kind of giving waffly answers, that you're giving kind of textbook detail answers.